What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to talk about my latest fountain pen obsession. No, it's not this paper. Although this paper is amazing, and fun fact, I have done a review of it. Um, <laughs> it's the Endless Creative Block. Uh, it's just tear off paper. It's regalia paper. Um, their version of, I, I guess, as close as close to Tomoe River paper as you could get without being Tomoe River paper. Um, but I'm going to use this to demonstrate <laughs> some of my obsessions. Now, for those of you who have been following me for some time now, you're going to know that I'm obsessed with the Caveco Sport. But, but I have recently, well, within the last like year in a bit, I think a little over a year. I've recently fallen in love with another pen brand that I have fallen down the rabbit hole immensely. And I'm pretty sure most of you watching know what I'm going to talk about because I now own five pens by this brand in a little over a year. And I'm about to own six because they're coming out with a new one that looks really dope. And to be fair, it is very different looking than the rest of the pens that I own. So let's just look at them. <laughs> yes, my latest fountain pen obsession is Bennu. So I avoided these guys like the plague for quite a long time because I didn't like the flash. I didn't understand why it was so you know, relatively expensive for just a resin pen with steel nibs. And I just, I just avoided them for a really long time. Uh, I do, before we get any further into this, I do have an actual like in-depth review of the Bennu Euphoria. And this is the bourbon finish and the Bennu Talisman. This is the Edelweiss finish. Um, I do have a quick look of the Dream Bean. Um, and I also have a comparison video between the Talisman and the Euphoria. Uh, so if you want to know more details about it, check those out. Um, because they're live and they're awesome. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but you know. Um, but yes, yeah, so I avoided them for a really long time. Then this pen is what changed the game for me. This is the Bennu Euphoria in Bourbon. And the reason why this one changed the game for me is because just look at it. It's beautiful. I am a sucker for warm toned pens. Uh, this one definitely doesn't fit in <laughs> with the rest. Uh, and the, the sixth one I'm gonna buy doesn't either. Uh, but it's just absolutely stunning. I adore it. And yes, it's flashy, but it is not nearly as flashy as some of Bennu's pens. Uh, and yeah, like the the regular steel, come on, focus. The regular steel nibs, I thought was like kind of silly because it's just it's just a Schmidt nib. Like it's, there's no special imaging on it. It's just like whatever. But guys, looks can be deceiving. Very deceiving. <laughs> because I I just I. I just love it. It is so amazing. These nibs write fantastically. All of them are simply stunning. Um, they're all very smooth. They're all generous with the ink flow. Um, now, I will say I've only ever used Schmidt's um, Bennu's number six size nibs because on the Euphoria, it's a number six as well as the Talisman. Uh, so I don't have any experience with their number five size nibs yet. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, it's insane. Come on, focus again. Um, these happen to be two fines, but I do have a medium. I have a medium inked up actually, and I'm about to get the broad. So when I have the broad, uh, I will do a comparison between the fine, medium, and broad, uh, but that will be coming later once I have it. So currently my Bennu Euphoria Bourbon is not inked up. My Bennu Talismans uh, in Dream Bean and Edelweiss are also not inked up, but the two most recent uh, Bennu pens that I have, the 
are actually like limited editions. Uh, so this is the Bennu Euphoria Pomegranate, and this is the Bennu Talisman Venus Hair. These are inked up, so I will show you what they look like. I'll start with this one because this has a fine nib and this has a medium. So I'm going to push this to the side for right now. This one is inked up with Diamine Pumpkin. Why? Because it's spooky season, people. So we have the Bennu. All right. Just, I mean, you can see the shine off of that. That it is a very generous flow. Uh, this ink, by the way, is just from a little sample here. I get this sample, I don't want to say yearly, but I just don't see the point in buying a whole bottle because, um, I, I only ever use it like once. Like basically I go through one, you know, standard international size cartridge of it um, just around this time of year. I, I don't have the desire to use it any other. So uh, I usually just get a sample of it. They're very, very smooth. Like I said, generous ink flow. You don't get a ton of line variation. It's, it's pretty stiff. Uh, but it is one of the best functioning pens that I have. Uh, and because of that, I forgive the basic design of it. Um, like, I just, yeah. It, it, oh my gosh. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking in a second. I did not spell that correctly, but I'm not going to fix it. This ink is wild. It goes down super red, super flashy, and then dries to be like sort of a, a, a brick red, like a, a, a brownie red. It's cool. And it's got some decent shading. Come on, there we go, all right. Uh, this pen, just like all of the others, pretty generous. It's not, um, it's not like a gusher. Uh, I do like my pens very, very wet. This is not an absolute gusher by any means, but it is, um, very generous. So like, you know, you don't really need to do much. Obviously it did not hold out there for reverse. Um, you don't really have to tune it at all so incredibly smooth. It does have the teeniest hint of a feedback, uh, and that will also depend on your paper. Uh, this is, like I said, endless regalia paper. So if you watch the review I've done of the endless paper, this is sort of like halfway in between uh, the feel of like a Rodia Clairefontaine and the feel of Tomoe. Uh, less uh, friction than Rodia and Clairefontaine have, but a little bit more friction than Tomoe River. Uh, these pens just write phenomenally. They fit really great in my hands. Uh, you have so many different designs to choose from. Uh, like you can just go buck wild. <laughs> um, 
you can throw caution to the wind. You can go super flashy. You can go understated. They do have a couple more pens now that are even more understated than um, these ones that I have. But these, I will say, are a little bit more on the muted side. Um, but I'm just obsessed. Like, just obsessed with them. Whoops. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And they're uh, seriously like they're they're these write better than half of the pens that I own <laughs> they do and, and that's really why I love them ultimately I love the feel of the resin it does feel like a higher quality resin um, like I said they fit beautifully in my hands they're very easy to clean uh, in North America and <laughs> they come with a standard international uh, cartridge converter um, apparently they do not come with that in Europe but that's not uncommon um, because apparently Europeans prefer cartridges over bottled ink um, I'll show you this one since this one is inked up so I 10 out of 10 recommend highly that you pick up a Benu pen um, they are they were originally based out of Russia since that whole thing began they have moved to Armenia so they're now based out of Armenia um, but they're sold at pretty much you know all of the the primary fountain pen retailers um, not as widely available in Canada and I, I hope that is just a yet, <laughs> but you can pretty much get them across the board in the States, uh, which for the most part is where the viewership of my videos lie. So definitely give them a try. Um, you, you just, you, you won't regret it. Seriously, guys, these are some of the best pens that I've ever written with. And I've written with so many now um, that I would rather have just these Banus and a couple other pens and to be fair I would be happy <laughs> like I'm just there's nothing bad about them to be fair other than the aesthetic not being for everyone uh, and like I said that is what kept me being you know snotty about them for so long uh, because I'm like it's 150 bucks like that's that's a lot of money for a steel nib pen that's like you know whatever but I get it guys I get it now I've gone down the rabbit hole my goodness uh I just I can't I'm just rambling now I can't I can't they're just they're just awesome so please check them out if you haven't yet already like I said I have full reviews of the um Bennu Euphoria and the Bennu Talisman as well as a comparison between them uh so do check those out if you want like the nitty-gritty details of the pen but for now, I will leave you with this as my latest fountain pen obsession. <sighs> All right. My goodness gracious. Guys, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button if you haven't yet done so already. Hit the subscribe if you want to make sure you see every video that comes out every Monday and Friday and the occasional Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. In the description below, you will find links to my Patreon account if you want to help support me and what I do here, as well as my Instagram and Discord. All right, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, everybody. It's time again to thank the Patreon crew. I'm filming this as of September 12th, 2022, so if you don't see your name here, I do update these regularly. We have two ultimate humans, Mr. Daniel Roddy and Comp Dave. And for my VIP tier, we have Susan, McCall Bennett Lawrence, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Subiwan Kenobi, Catherine Molina, Waylay Chang, Brian Law, Bill Pemberton, Lucas Bell, Robert Myers, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Jessica Chow, DigitalTent.tech. Brian Hunter, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Joan Worthman, Luna Wolf Games, Aaron C., and Glenn Kelly. Thank you, everyone who supports me, whether you're in the shout out tier or not. You all help make this dream possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and once again, I'll see you next time. Bye.